it's yeah. over. That's it. That's it's it. over. It's over. Good stuff to Fatsa42 for taking Combo Breaker 2022. And the for Hi, Dominant. I'm Fox of 42 I'm mainly a uni player, but I've fallen in love with Type Lumina, which is a game that's really easy to recommend since its most recent patch. I often hear from newer players from other games, it feels like I'm missing something with how risk-reward works and the overwhelming amount of defensive options. If you're having trouble controlling the pace of a match, I'm going to ask you to consider what is hands down the most important resource in Type Lumina, the Moon Gauge. The Moon Gauge is tied to virtually every other system mechanic in some way. From generating meter to shield frame data to clash frames during Moon Drive, there's a lot to unpack. So let's start what you can spend Moon Gauge on. First, you can spend Moon Gauge on Moon Skills, single input specials that have fast startup and sometimes special properties. Using a Moon Skill takes 3 stocks out of a total of 11 from your Moon Gauge. Moon Skills build a lot of meter, so using a Moon Skill in a combo will often lead to gaining a full bar of meter from the route. Second, Moon Gauge can activate Moon Drive if you have 5 out of the 11 Moon Gauge stocks available. This triggers a screen freeze and the person who activated their Moon Drive is in recovery for 3 frames. The entire Moon Gauge is consumed and will slowly deplete. While in Moon Drive, every character gets an extra air action and their Moon Skills gain Clash Frames relative to the amount of Moon Gauge left. Note, these Clash Frames do run out completely as the Moon Gauge runs out. There's also a boost to meter gain that can allow for big cash out opportunities to close out rounds. Finally, Moon Gauge can be spent on the BC follow-up and shield interactions. The shield lunge, as we will call it, can be used both as the defender and as the attacker. As the defender, it can be used to blow up deep jump-ins that would otherwise be safe against the slower shield A follow-up. As the attacker, it can be used to try and escape sticky shield interactions where you'd otherwise be forced to make a harder guess. Lunge comes at a hefty cost though, 5 stocks out of your Moon Gauge. While you can use the Moon Gauge on these options to great effect, overusing the Moon Gauge and running low has harsh consequences. You want to keep your Moon Gauge above 50% whenever possible. Why? Well, let's first look at shield interactions. There's a lot here, but the two most important options as you have as the attacker when interacting with shield are the aforementioned Shield Lunge and Tap Shield. Tap Shield is shielding back as quickly as possible and not holding the shield for any extended duration. Let's see how Tap Shield changes with the Moon Gauge. When your Moon Gauge is above 50%, easily identifiable as being shiny, Shield has less recovery, so you can use Tap Shield and be safe against immediate Shield A and Shield B. Shield B will do 1000 damage and you'll be at even frames with your opponent, but overall, not nearly as harsh as getting comboed. When your Moon Gauge is maxed out and you get shielded, if your opponent doesn't use a shield follow-up, tap shield is minus 7. So there is still a lot of instances where you will be safe to shield nothing at a distance. Below max but still shiny above 50%, tap shield becomes worse and most characters can get a punish. Except Mario. Sorry Mario. When your Moon Gauge is below 50%, not shiny, tap shield becomes much worse. Now if the opponent uses shield B, you get fatal countered. If you get fataled by shield B, you lose two moon gauge stocks. Meanwhile, your opponent gains a total of three. This is also big damage, so it's actually preferable to get hit by shield A than it is with this. If you are low on moon gauge, it can actually be better to take the shield A rather than get fataled by shield B. Recovery on tap shield is also higher, so if they don't use a follow-up, you are much more punishable if you whiff that shield. Even Mario can get a punish here. Outside of shield interactions, Moon Gauge is also important to keep because of Moon Drive. When you are pressuring the opponent and moving around in neutral, there are times when the opponent's Moon Drive can put you in a checkmate situation. It's important to keep your own Moon Drive at the ready in these situations in order to stay safe. You can basically think of Moon Gauge as your enablement meter. When your Moon Gauge is shining, you can make plays with lower commitment, you can blow up your opponent easier, and overall you have more power to do what you want to do. However, flexing this power is where a lot of players run into problems by running out of their Moon Gauge early. So let's talk about common pitfalls that'll take you from shiny to empty without much reward. Probably the most common pitfall of all is popping Moon Drive very early in a match. The opponent scores a knockdown, runs their Oki, and you pop Moon Drive immediately. 
More often than not, this is a mistake. Moon Drive opens up the possibility for some RPS, but it guarantees nothing on your defense if your opponent responds correctly. Relying on Moon skills defensively after a Moon Drive is particularly dicey. A good player can recognize the clash frames and respond in several ways to punish you. Also, if the opponent does nothing on their OP, you are at a disadvantage and you'll have to hold pressure anyways. So what should Moon Drive be used for on defense? Moon Drive can be used, quite simply, to see a mix-up and block it. There are some Oki setups that are genuinely really hard to deal with, so using Moon Drive can help avoid that guessing situation. It can also be used to check an opponent for overextending on their offense if the opponent does not have their own Moon Drive available. This is another reason why you want to stay above 50% Moon, so you can respond with your own Moon Drive and not be checkmated. Moon skills are the other candy that feel oh so good to use, but at a cost. Depending on your character, they can give you a big upper hand in neutral, but use a moon skill more than once off the bat and you're already below 50%. So when using moon skills in neutral, be as sure as you can. You always want a good payoff for the cost. Finally, Shield BC is very powerful, but also particularly vulnerable this patch. When using Shield Lunge on defense, the attacker can get a punish if they shield back. In the air, like during a safe jump, the Shield A follow-up will suffice. On the ground, Shield Lunge is the most consistent punish. When using Shield Lunge on offense, the defender can jump cancel a clash with Shield Lunge and chase the attacker. This dynamic means Lunge can sometimes put the attacker in a worse situation than if they had just shielded back. Overall, Shield Lunge is a pretty expensive option with downsides, so it's best to consider the situation carefully and whether or not using it is warranted. One example would be if you're shielded from the air. When the opponent shields you on the ground, tap shielding can keep you safe for most options. However, when the opponent shields an attack in the air, Shield B will fatal you if you shield back, so leaving the situation makes more sense. So we have all these ways that we can squander Moon Gauge away really quickly, but how do we actually go about getting it back? In Type Lumina, projectiles are all subject to getting shielded. Because they can give the opponent Moon Gauge, each poke in neutral has to be weighed against the opponent's movement and awareness. Shielding successfully will grant a stock of Moon Gauge and return a small portion of recoverable health. Because actively poking can give the opponent resources, poke should be weighed against using 2AB to charge for Moon Gauge. Partial charges still count towards the next Moon Stock. Every character can play lame to a certain degree, so charging can incentivize the opponent to move in and interact with you. On offense, Moon Gauge is gained every time you land a hit on the opponent. Fatal counters will give two stocks of Moon Gauge while removing two stocks from the opponent. This is true both of fatal hits on shield as well as throws. By the way, as of this patch, the opponent will also lose two Moon Stocks if a 5B or 5C connects with their low shield. A stock of Moon Gauge is also awarded for the first time an EX move is used in a combo. If your character has a combo throw, they can build two Moon Gauge Stocks, one from the throw itself and one from the meter usage after. And if they get a fatal throw, they can earn up to three Moon Gauge Stocks in one swoop. After any EX move or arc drive, you can also choose to forego a mix-up on Oki and instead charge for another Moonstock. This is particularly relevant if you're on 4 Moonstocks and want to get to 5. You can often still attack your opponent, and the changes to shield mean that something like a 5C will still be threatening. 5A with cancelled into Moon Drive can deal both with heat and any reversal attempts, potentially to close out a round. On defense, the quickest way to gain Moon Gauge is by successfully shielding. One Moon Stock is gained on each successful shield, and another is gained if the shield follow-up hits the opponent. It's worth noting that even if Shield B does not fatal counter the opponent, it can still earn you an extra Moon Gauge from the hit. The opponent hit by Shield B will also gain one Moon Stock, but will lose one Moon Stock if they whiff Tap Shield. Because there's the risk of losing Moon Gauge and exploding by shielding incorrectly, if you're on four stocks of Moon Gauge, just one shy of Shiny, and you have a life lead, it can be worth taking a throw from the opponent to get to 50%. It'll cost you a little life, but it removes the temptation to throw around from a bad shield. Consider it as an option. Now that we've covered the ins and outs of Moon Gauge, let's see how a few situations play out at different Moon Gauge states. Let's look at projectile interactions. If Lob doesn't shield back here, he's slightly blessed. Lob is out of reach of shield A. 
so Shield B and Shield Lunge are really the only threats. Vlov can use Tap Shield to be safe against Shield B and Lunge. If Vlov lunges offensively, he gets a punish on Shield B. And if both players use Shield BC, there's a clash and an opportunity for a scramble. So this is all great if Vlov has Moon Gauge, but what if he doesn't and the opponent does? If he doesn't shield, he gets hit by Shield Lunge, so he has to shield. If he does shield, Shield B won't fatal him. He can also opt to not do anything and shield the B follow-up. So how is shielding projectiles actually useful if the Vlov player responds correctly? Well, these options still have weaknesses that can be exploited by the defender. There's also the mind game of delayed follow-ups, but none of those mind games have to be played by the attacker if the defender doesn't have lunge available. Now let's look at safe jump interactions. In this patch, if the opponent uses Shield A against a deep jump in, Shield A will be blocked at minus 7 and most characters can get a punish. Shield B is also not threatening if the opponent doesn't shield back. Shield BC is the one option that poses a legitimate threat when shielding a safe jump. If the opponent shields back, they give up their turn, but they cannot be punished with normals and they can still tech a throw. The defender can also blow up reshielding with a delayed lunge, but those delayed follow-up mind games have the capacity to go both ways. But playing those mind games at all is only possible if the threat of lunge is on the table. Essentially, you need moon gauge in order to have a bargaining chip on defense. We could go into many more scenarios involving the delayed shield follow-up meta and a lot more moon drive stuff as well, but hopefully by now you just get the idea. If you have 50% moon gauge, you are enabled in a lot of options while you limit your opponents. Hopefully this video has given you an idea about how to better manage the most important resource in Type Lumina. Good luck and have fun!